In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to have a very special guest with some wicked fast SSDs next. Welcome back. Boy, that was quick. <laughs> what happened to our splash there? It cut out. Uh, welcome back, my brothers and sisters, to yet another fine episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks live stream. It's Wednesday, 5.30, where you'll find us most Wednesdays. And uh, yes, we have a very special guest today that we'll get to shortly. Um, Marco, did you like kick the cord out on the splash there in the beginning or what? What's going on? Brother? It wasn't me. That, 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 was, that, that was Chris G for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the little... blame on that one. We have two. It's we have two Chris. Yeah, we have two Chris's here today. Chris G. Chris Getting is behind the the curtain, just turning the knobs and dials, and uh, he must have kicked the uh, the cord out on on the splash reel there. But um, Chris Ramsair, hopefully I'm saying that right. Chris, Chris yeah. Ramsair from Fizon is here with us. He is our very special guest. Uh, Chris, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, with COVID, we haven't had the chance to to catch up at CES in a few years or Computex, but uh, here we are in the the virtual world, uh, making this happen. There you go, and uh, appreciate you taking your time with us tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about um, some crazy fast uh, storage technology that uh, you folks are working on at Fizon. Um, uh, do do me a favor, if you would, refresh me on your official title at at Fizon, so we get that right from the, the uh, get go here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, my title is technically it's uh, senior manager of technical marketing. Um, that means I do a lot of testing. Uh, I coordinate with media uh, on things like this. Uh, some of our preview articles, because you know Fizon doesn't sell. Uh, SSDs directly to the public. They go through our partners, but I also work closely with a lot of the partners. Um, everyone at Fizen is kind of a little bit uh, everywhere. Yeah, you wear you wear multiple hats. That is not uncommon. We do that uh, at Hot Hardware as well. Um, I, I did notice that you're the technical manager of a serious wall of axes behind you. Uh, <laughs> you you've got you've got just a few. Uh, do you have it? Do you have, is this, is this a healthy addiction? I think it is because I only, I only have three and I love them and I want more, but go ahead. <laughs> what do well, you know, I, I, I strongly <laughs> suggest getting more because more is, <laughs> is always better. More is good. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it really, it started out something, uh, my daughter and I could do together. Uh, my daughter and my wife do the, the pageant thing and, go all over the country and she's won uh, a handful and this is something her and I can do together and with my boys we had sports basketball and football and so on but uh, this is a somewhat healthy until it get turned into all this but somewhat <laughs> healthy thing to do that's awesome no, that, that's great stuff and it's great that uh, you brought your daughter along for the ride too it's great when you can involve the kids and in making music and and having fun like that noticed you have a couple of beautiful and I, I'm, I'm just gonna take a quick detour Marco I'm sorry a couple of beautiful <laughs> less Pauls back there with the beautiful p90 dog ear pickups in them too those yeah, are nice that's actually uh, the, looks like. the the blue one is actually those are both from the the gym series uh, yeah. which came out in 1996 hmm. and back then i had a very short run at a large uh guitar reseller uh, and i was running live sound for a, a few bands in indianapolis and i saw <laughs> the blue one there and it was like the first guitar i ever fell in love with so it was like a 20 30 some year search to find one of those and i finally found one last year so mm, yeah that's got some uh that's got some jimmy page going on in that wood for sure that's yeah. good stuff <laughs> good <laughs> stuff well we, we won't we won't stay too long on on the guitars uh i i'll have to uh, commiserate with you uh on on those at the later date let's uh let's talk about a little bit about um about you want to talk about this, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are you holding? Oh, yeah. Hold, cut to him, Chris. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's yes. that baby. 
But let, let's talk about the company behind the technology. Those are some 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 SSDs you got going on there. Some some good juicy stuff that we're going to get to. But tell us a little bit yeah. about Faison because not everybody may know about the company and the technology behind it. Well, Faison is a is an engineering company. First of all, uh, this year we fired a ton of engineers. Every month it seems like there's a job fair uh, in Taiwan where we uh, look for the the greatest up and coming talent. And, um, we, we bring them in, uh, within maybe the last three years, we've probably almost doubled, uh, our engineering headcount. And, um, it's really strange for me because I'm not a traditional trained engineer at EE, uh, with a lot of the people I work with that, that are, but, um, that's all right. I, I learned quickly <laughs> with this <laughs> with this group. It's a lot of very, very smart people uh, involved. And also with the with the growth, I would say one of my the most difficult parts of my job is actually keeping track of of who's running what and where, um, because there are so many projects uh, that's going on before Fizen would re re would release. Uh, a new SSD maybe once a year or so, but as you can tell, we've got a, a much brisker cadence going on now. Uh, mm. For 2022, for instance, we have uh, E21T coming, uh, which is probably going to be one of the best-selling Fizen SSDs of all times. Um, E26 in several form factors, and both for the consumer and enterprise market. Uh, we've got the ReDriver coming up, which is basically going to put Fizen on almost every motherboard um, in the second in the second half if it has PCI Gen 5. Uh, and of course, we're not stopping with our, our existing lines. We've got like the new E18 uh, that's coming to market right now in an 8 terabyte capacity. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a PCIe 4.0 by 4. Um, you guys know know these products as the the Kingston KC three thousand and uh, the Seagate Fire Cuda five thirty and Corsair and many of our partners have. Oh, there there's go. one right there. <laughs> there's yeah. the Kingston KC three thousand. That's, yeah, a, let, that's let, a bad boy you got right there. Yeah, that's, that's a nice let, drive. A very fast let's talk drive. about that that real quickly. Um, so so folks understand, Fizon develops the chip technology, the controller and the ReDriver technology for, in the case of PCI Express 5, the chip level technology to enable these OEMs to go build SSDs, right? So that that's the model. You sell these chips in mass to, to, the, to the major SSD um, OEMs, third-party OEMs. Is that fair? Yeah, but there, there's actually, there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. When we think of a, a controller, we just see this this little shiny piece but inside of there, there's a lot going on. There's uh, ARM cores. We have our own proprietary cores as well, which are basically super modified CPUs, uh, very efficient. Um, there's the Phi in there. Uh, we develop, for the most part, all of our own IP for that. So... Uh, what, it's not just when you say phi, I'm just going to hop important. in right real quick there. Yeah, when you say phi, just for the folks in the audience, the the physical interface from the controller to the memory is that that that's what you meant by phi, right? Well, the phi is actually from like the the PCIe to the to the rest of the controller. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yep, so the phi on that side, the physical interface. When, yeah, yeah. A lot of companies, you know, they say they've got all this vertical integration and all that, but they'll still have to license that from, from companies that have it because there's very few companies that are uh, making that technology in-house. Gotcha. So, so that, so you're doing that in-house, you don't license that, that's your own IP. Yes, correct. Nice. Nice. So Marco, I know we've got a few questions lined up and maybe we should, maybe we should start with, um, well, Tell us where you want to start, but we've got, you know, sort of a laundry list of new products that Chris has in store. Not only PCI Express Gen 5, which we'll get to, but PCIe 4. Um, 
why don't you go ahead and dive right in? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you know, the most, of the, <laughs> most of the hot hardware <laughs> probably knows that, you know, the vast majority of PCIe Gen 4 enthusiast SSDs are built around Fizon tech. So the Fizon controllers, you know, they're on, they're on this Kingston drive. They're on some high-end drives, you know, from Corsair, tons of partners, uh, leverage Fizon tech so you know you might be checking out a brand new ssd for your rig and you know you're, you're looking at the benchmark charts odds are the ones near the top of the charts if you're looking for an enthusiast drive is powered by Fizon. um but with with pcie gen 5 coming chris over and above just the double the bandwidth on those pci express lanes what are you guys doing so i i should back up for a second at ces 2022 you guys announced a ton of stuff but in terms of uh, SSDs, the E21, I believe, was the controller that it's going to be on the DRAM list drives. And the E26 is going to be the enthusiast controller for the next wave of high-end SSDs. Over and above that increased bandwidth on PCI Express, what are you guys doing to you know, sort of push the evolution of SSDs forward? Well... Uh, a lot of talk goes into, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the maximum bandwidth, and that's only one part of the equation. Of course, with with the Gen Five, we see a doubling of bandwidth, um, but also on the on the other end of the scale, the low Q depth performance where most consumer workloads are, uh, the memory interface for E twenty six on PCIe Gen Five goes from uh, 1,600 megatransfers per second, like what we've got on uh, E18. Uh, this goes up to 2,400. So uh, when you see a lot of people talk about, yeah, there you go. Um, when you see a lot of people talk about, uh, well, PCI Gen 5 isn't going to be much better than PCI Gen 4, just like uh, the first generation Gen 4 wasn't that much better than Gen 3. Well, we we totally skipped that part this time. We didn't <laughs> want to do that. Nice. We wanted to make it faster. We wanted to make it faster on the on the bandwidth side, so the professional market can see it. And we wanted to make it faster on the consumer side as well. So we've got uh, we've got this faster transfer bus from the controller to the flash, and um, that's going to increase your your IOPS. But really, what we're saying there when when it's tech nerdy guys say that is what we're doing is we're reducing the latency and the latency is what you feel uh, when you're on your computer, what makes your computer feel fast. And honestly, you can take like a 10 year old CPU. And as long as you've got a really fast uh, latency bus there to the storage, I mean, to slap in a new SSD can make it feel like a new laptop or desktop. Yeah. We've we've said that often here at, at Hot Hardware. If there's one if there's one upgrade that uh, if somebody was to ask you that that will make your PC feel faster, we're not talking about gaming frame rate or, or something like that, but just general feel and responsiveness. It's the SSD, no question about it. <laughs> um, and and you mentioned something there, and there's there's some nuance, and let, let's let's dig into that a little bit. But, <coughs> Every, everybody focuses on, and, and we we noticed, I don't know, Chris, if you want to put that slide back up, but we, if you're looking at that, the sequential read right here, 12 gigabytes per second of bandwidth on reads, that's almost 2x what we're seeing now with the top end PCI Express Gen 4 drives. That's crazy fast, but it's sequential reads. And what folks feel are the 4K read and write IOPS, right? The, the, the small file at super low latency, quick access response times, right? Yeah. And actually, if you've got the next slide in that deck, um, when we announce controllers like this, what we did at CES, we come out with it and they're, they're kind of conservative, right? That's the, <laughs> that's the legal, this is what we know we can do type thing. And the, the controllers came back just right before CES and we had some guys Russian to throw some firmware together. As you can see, um, already, you know, the conservative numbers, we kind of we kind of walked a little bit past. So uh, <laughs> while a lot of the articles are saying are saying 12s, we we have higher hopes uh, once we bring these to market. Nice, nice. Marco, I didn't mean to 
steal no, your groove I, there. Go for it. <laughs> I, I thought you were actually going to lead into some stuff that I know Chris would be totally into. So if, oh. if, if you don't know Chris, he has a long story to history benchmarking SSDs for some publications back in the day as well. And, you know, you, yeah. you guys brought up the point about everyone looks at that. And even you guys right in that slide, you look at that big sequential transfer number because it gets, you know, people's eyes. Wow, look at that bandwidth. But there's so much more to an SSD that determines that uh, the performance that you feel. There's that low Q depth performance. You know, there, there's latency depending on your workload there. You know, the, the IOPS that it can handle. There's there's so much more than just that sequential number. Chris, why don't you? Why don't you tell some people what they should, if you're a consumer, let me, let me just narrow this down. If you're a consumer and you're a gamer, what are the numbers people should be looking for when they look at a review of an SSD? Good question. Well, well, gaming as it, as it sits right now, and of course this is going to change later on and we can talk about that. Uh, if you want to, we could probably talk about that for an extra hour. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, with with games, it's really kind of a mixed bag because you've got you've got some very large file transfers going on, but at the same time, you've also got those small file transfers that that rely on that latency to feel fast. Um, now, in the future, and what we hope to see in twenty twenty two, of course, with Microsoft's direct storage, um, it, it basically takes the the SSD workload. Uh, and and shakes everything up because before we've never had a high Q depth uh, workload on the consumer side, and of course, consumer SSDs love high Q depth workloads. Uh, that's how you get the massive uh, performance numbers. So what they're trying to do is actually change. Um, they're trying to change it from the model where you just take a whole bunch of data throw it at the GPU, and then the SSD goes back to sleep. Uh, what we're going to have in the future is more of a streaming model. Now, where you get into that, the best way I've been able to explain this is with a streaming model, we're all familiar with Netflix, right? When you've got high bandwidth uh, to your Netflix and the server and your home and all the components to make it work, you can have 4K video, uh, HDR, Atmos sound, like all these awesome bells and whistles that really enhance the user experience. Well, on the game side, we've also got the same thing. We've got the ultra setting or, you know, whatever high setting they decide to make it uh, or call it in each game. Well, when you're streaming the data from the SSD to the GPU directly, you know, bypassing the CPU and memory, if you don't have that bandwidth, you're not going to be able to have all those bells and whistles. So our theme at, at CES was actually, um, shoot, what was the theme? I came up with it. Now I can't remember the name of it. Uh, the, fu the future of gaming uh, starts with Fizen. And what that really means is uh, as we move to this new model of streaming data, the future of gaming really does start with the storage and uh, Fizen is working very hard to make sure that that we lead in that market. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, direct storage is, is an interesting proposition, too, because, you know, there's a couple of guys in the audience. We have John Coulter, you know, is, is watching right now. Anyone that's that's tested an array of sure. SSDs knows if you take some drives and you hit them with a, a long sustained high Q depth workload, they overheat and throttle if you don't have great cooling in your system or they don't have a heat sink, say. Um, I don't think that's something every manufacturer has considered with direct storage coming. So you might see some drives with big heat sinks, et cetera, where the original ones didn't. What are the concerns or are there any concerns you guys have at Fizon with that you know, constant sustained load that's going to be on drives moving forward with direct storage? Well, I think uh, the industry as a whole is ready to tackle thermals. Uh, we've got these uh, motherboards. They've all got uh, the heat sinks on them now for the M.2 SSDs. And if your motherboard doesn't have that or you're using something like a carrier card, um, you can buy SSDs with heat sinks. But to be honest, thermals are only just a small fraction of, of the challenges that we're going to have. So, for instance, you take a game like, I don't know, Microsoft Flight Simulator, 
and it's it's this big chunk of data and it's being streamed but something like the cockpit is being streamed more often uh you can run into problems when you go in and you read that data over and over and over uh you're actually each read after you do it 10,000 or so times of one cell will actually start to corrupt the data around it. So that's a that's another challenge uh, that may be kind of too geeky for for everyone uh, on here, but <laughs> there's there's definitely a lot more than just thermals that have to be tackled to uh, to make this work right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It's it's going to be it's going to be. Oh, yeah, I was going <clears> to <throat> no, go ahead, pull some up. No, Dave, go ahead. Yeah. Build other questions up. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, we'll take a look at this one. When will we see two to sixteen k improvements? I don't know if uh, you can. That, so, it, Charles, large, is larger a, a transfer. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if he's talking about block sizes, two k block sizes, and sixteen uh, k block sizes, but basically, it's it's the same thing. If you improve four k and you improve the thirty two k on up. Uh, you're going to definitely see improvements in uh, 2K and 16K as well. And that's both a combination of uh, the controller, uh, its efficiency, the the bus back to the to the NAN efficiency, and of course the bus back to the to the host operating or the host system. So gotcha. you know what? That's actually just I want to build on that question because just for my, my own edification. If you were to take so the existing E18, like the high-end drives, it's the, the 1600 uh, mega transfers per second right now it, between those mm -hmm. interfaces. If you were to just take an existing drive, I know we can't do this, I'm talking theoretically, and increase the speed of those interfaces, would it help these different uh, block sizes automatically? Well, the, the E18 is is physically limited to, to 1600, so I can't just go in and do it. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you you would see uh, an improvement there. It's just like if you have a uh, an application on your on your notebook or desktop that is heavily dependent on your your DRAM speed. Uh, if you increase your DRAM speed and your CPU supports it, then you'll see a, a benefit there in the, the application performance. Got it. So we have another question from Daniel Bird. It's more of a general SSD question. Oh, you, you popped one. it up already, Dave. Yeah, so, good one. Um, So I'm a video editor. I archive most projects on SSDs. Will these new chips have a better long-term endurance compared to the previous gen? And what other benefits are there for me in my work? Actually, I'd love that question because that question. also <laughs> ties, ties into something else uh, that we do at at Fizen. When we talked earlier about all the other things that go on behind the scenes that most people don't think about, uh, when these new memory types come to market, we're shrinking the lithography uh, on the NAND or the NAND producers are. So it puts more uh, emphasis on Fizen's ability to build the air correction engine to make this memory possible. Um, a lot of what we're seeing on uh, the uh, the TBW and stuff, it's really not so much NAND advan advances. It's really advances in the controller and what we're able to go in and decipher uh, when we have things like read disturb or write disturb, uh, long-term data retention where it's just sitting there. You know, over time, the voltages drop and the controller has to be very powerful to go in and say, oh, well, this one's dropping, but I still know what it is. And you want to be able to do that without having to go in and read the data and rewrite it the way it's supposed to be, because that write is going to eat into your endurance of the flash. Got it. Hmm. So, so I don't, in general, I'm going, to, I'm going to pop one more question in because we, we kind of skipped it earlier. Uh, Chris, I'm not sure how much you can say, but we have James asking, you know, are there, is there any architectural details of those proprietary uh, coex processors that you guys can talk about? Or do you just sort of say, hey, we have these proprietary processors next to the ARM cores? <laughs> if if I knew, I would tell you because no one's told me not to. <laughs> gotcha. But, okay. uh, but honestly, it's, it's something I could probably make a few calls or emails and say, you know, give me the skinny on this. But uh, it's something I really haven't had uh, haven't had the need to dive into. 
gotcha. for our next call uh, for our next podcast. So I'll, I'll see what I can dig up for that. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry, I cut you off, off Dave. Were you gonna you gonna ask something? No, no. I, I was I was just you know going to comment on the endurance side of of the house, and and I think uh, as Daniel's question pointed out, he's a video editor, so he's doing a lot of very large sequential read write, um, you know, activity on on his drives uh, with video files, big fat video video files. So, Chris, sounds to me like, yes, we're getting an increase in bandwidth, but we're also getting uh, improved endurance as well uh, as part of the journey. Is that a fair sort of encapsulation of, you know, the gist? Well, honestly, we haven't specced out the endurance yet of the next generation flash. Um, I would love to say, yeah, we're going to double endurance. But uh, I, I personally, I don't know yet. But the, obviously, the That's goal is, too. Yeah. is not only to make a, a faster product, but also <laughs> one that lasts longer. And I think we can all agree right now, there's, there's very few people that are actually um, using their SSDs, at least on the consumer side, to the point where they need to rip them out or start worrying about, uh, about endurance issues. We, we still haven't really got there yet. One day, maybe. But, uh, you know, all those engineers we're hiring, we're, we're trying very hard to make that not, not become a reality. Yeah, big difference between uh, a workstation workload, which is what that is, essentially a video workstation workload, and the data center, for example, where maybe you have a database going and that thing's getting thrashed all day long, 24-7, you know, and so definitely a different usage model there. When you when it comes to consumer and workstation client, uh, you're right. I think I think pushing the endurance there, you, you got to be doing quite a bit <laughs> to, to push. Yeah, the and also the the sequential workload, it it actually doesn't cause as much wear on the drive as like a random workload. So you'll right. get more uh, more writes uh, writing that large box size sequential data than you would just pounding the drive with 4K data. Gotcha. Didn't know that. So he's he's cool. in a good spot. I mean, he's he's not going to have to upgrade very often. But no sweat, Daniel. Make, right? Make, yeah. make make sure you upgrade to that Gen Five drive because that workload <laughs> is really going to benefit uh, from the increased uh, bandwidth, though. Oh yeah, definitely. Sure. And you're going right, to want I'm a new. Pl- you're going to you're going to want one of those new platforms with PCIe Gen Five to crunch that video faster. So. Buy more hardware, so you know you don't get it without the new platform, right? So, (laughs) yeah. So this is this is kind of a general question. I know you're going to have to walk a line because you know you you can't name any companies, et cetera, et cetera. But (laughs) what what Fizon does, you know, you kind of you build this this IP and have to work with many other companies, or at least a handful of other companies that make the NAND, that you know that make the flash memory that goes on the drives. Um, mm-hmm. And all of that NAND could perform differently, have different endurance, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of different characteristics with that NAND. What are some of the what are some of the challenges you guys have to contend with working with all of the NAND manufacturers? Or is that sort of something that the, the, the companies building the drives have to worry about? Well, for, for the firmware side, we have to enable a product that, that can work with all these uh, different types of flash. As you know, flash is uh, it's non-volatile, but when it comes to pricing, it's it's quite volatile. So uh, a company may want to use uh, X NAN one day, but because of supply issues and the, of course the global supply chain right now is you know awful, um, you, they may need to to enable another flash. And of course, having the engineering power to do that, to enable all these different types of NAND uh, is definitely a benefit with Fizen. Uh, it is challenging because you've got uh, all these different kinds of NAND. I mean, it, it's in, it's incredible. Uh, even the stuff that you might say is is the same thing. Well, it's, it's five months later and they've done something different uh, or enabled a feature. Um, so it, it's really just like working with new NAND again uh, from the start. So that really just comes down to engineering. And the, the, the firmware that that you guys obviously you guys have to you know have a base level firmware that works across this wide variety of configurations. Do some of your partners take that firmware 
you know, make modifications. How do some of these consumer drives <laughs> differentiate? I know it's mostly done in firmware. Yeah, it's uh, there's a different the the differences. I mean, you've got um, the flash, of course, but the the firmware is a big deal. So uh, E26, uh, one that we really haven't talked much about. It's this tiny little piece right here. Um, I think we're enabling like three or four different NAND right now. Firmware wise, I believe, I believe it's something like 21 different firmwares. Uh, they're all going up through the different, uh, parts of the company for different, uh, markets and different clients. So a, a lot of these clients, their, their needs are, are quite different. So like, a a PC OEM, for instance, um, I know e, E21T is being looked at for Gen 4 uh, notebooks heavily uh, for what you're going to buy later on in the year and, of course, next year. So their requirement is going to be quite a bit different in a notebook than what, uh, say, a channel product is that's going into to desktop PCs. Got it. We should probably we're, we're we're past the half hour mark. We should get to some of those CES products because I'm sure that's you know lots of folks wanted to see. So let let's start with with E21T. That's next gen DRAMless. And since you're saying that that's you know you, you've got some notebook OEMs where that drive is going to be targeted, I'm assuming that's going to be also be low power, perhaps help with battery life. What can you tell us about E21T? Yeah, that's that's actually exactly it. So E21T, uh, it's what what a reviewer, what I, when I was a reviewer, I would have called a mainstream drive. Um, it is a DRAMless product, but I think in 2022, the stigma of DRAMless is actually going to go away. And it's really unfortunate that I'm on this side now because anything <laughs> I say about that is going to come off sounding like some marketing or used car sales guy or something. But <laughs> E21T is like the real deal. When I tested this product uh, in my office, I was like, holy cow, like they, someone made a really, really, really good DRAMOS SSD. Uh, and I mentioned before that personally, I think E21T may, um, it may end up becoming Fizen's best selling uh, controller to date. Even though we've sold a boatload of E16 and E18, E21T just fits. Uh, it fits right in. I mean, if you look at the performance, uh, and of course, these are the, the early kind of conservative numbers, but even with that 4,800 megabytes per second sequential read, 4,500 write, over half a million IOPS read and 600,000 IOPS write, I mean, that's, none of us would look at that today and say, oh, well, that's a mainstream SSD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's some high-end stuff. It, it's, I mean, it's, that's, that's fire. We're still thinking mainstream SSDs are, you know, PCIe Gen 3 or, or even high-end Gen 3 drives now that that's uh, trickled down uh, in market. But the other thing is, is this is where E21T uh, steps away from all those other drives that we consider mainstream right now. If you look on here on specifications, we got 1600 mega transfers a second. And of course, that's the same as SE18 shipping today, the fast E18. The, of course, they're all fast, but like the flagship E18s that are out there right now. It's also built on a 12 nanometer process, just like E18, but this is a four channel DRAMless part. So there's a significant power uh, savings there. So we're going to get this sucker in notebooks and. Uh, it's all day notebook notebook performance at Gen four performance speed. So, yeah, that's what I was gonna I was gonna ask, and it, it did sound to me like you're talking about premium premium notebook, and um, you know this is designed for great battery life combined with uh, you know great performance. So good stuff without you know without having to light up that DRAM. Chris, is yep. is there going to be a retail product based on E twenty one also, or you see it as an OEM product? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely OEM and retail. Uh, I actually I hope to send some reviewers some drives uh, around the first week of February, second week of February, so you guys can can have at it. And it's 
it'll be the preview program again, like we done on E18 um, firmware that's not 100% ready, but it's close enough to where you can get a taste uh, and know what's going on before uh, you start getting in, you know, flooded with the, the channel drives from our branded partners. So okay. there you go. While we're on uh, E21, I don't know if you can answer that one. Well, E21 TBN compact flashcards. Uh, I I wouldn't even know. Uh, I, mm. I don't deal much with the compact flash side. Uh, I'm really diving in now pretty heavy on SD cards, but I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. We could go and find out, and I could answer it in the uh, comment section then. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. I, 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 Tony, do you mean CF Express or a PCI Express card? Oh, he just commented CF Express. Yeah, that's probably not yeah. an SSD. It's going to be in, in a CF Express, uh, CF right. Express card controller. Yeah. Gotcha. And cool. then James had one, if we want to, I don't know if you want to scroll up to that. Interesting, um, you know, market dynamic question. Can you talk about how Fizen competes with companies like FADU? I don't know even sure yeah, they are, who they're, sells this. Is, yeah, they're they're a, they're a company in in China. Um, I guess if if there was a, a technical marketing rep from China on here, he could probably answer <laughs> that. I mean, Fizen is <laughs> is obviously uh, magnitudes larger. Um, but that's not to, to disparage, uh, what they're doing over there. Uh, gotcha. I just, I don't see that being a, a real fair comparison. Uh, not on your radar. What Fizen has going on and, and what they're doing. Yeah. Gotcha. Plus if well, I remember right there, they're almost all enterprise products as well. So. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Um, there was a there was a question on E twenty six timing. I don't know if we can talk about that. E twenty six. You can try. Ask <laughs> so let, let's actually let, let's dive into E twenty six because if you're an enthusiast, that's yeah. probably your next SSD controller. So you guys showed off E twenty six at at, at CES mm -hmm. as well. That's going to be you know the next big boy that hits a, a wide array of enthusiast drives. Most likely, obviously, we can't talk about unreleased product, but. You know, we saw what you guys did with E18, so it's a safe bet that lots of the same companies are going to leverage E26. So why don't we uh, why don't we talk about what makes E26 special and, and how that's going to kick some butt? Well, I mean, we're here to talk about unreleased product, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're not playing that game. I, don't, I, I, I don't mean, from par from guys. partners, you're not going to reveal what partners are coming with with E26. Yeah. That's what I well, just luckily, what enabling. Luckily, we already right. have uh, one of our partners uh, made an announcement. At CES, so uh, I think we had, we had a, willing and able. We had we had Fugger here Was saying he, he he saw uh, E26 at the A Data booth, so that must be one of them. <laughs> yeah, um, I I think he means MSI. So yeah, gotcha. either way, I everyone wants to have a Fizen controller these days. <laughs> um, E26, it, it's our our first PCIe Gen Five. Uh, it's built on TSMC 12 nanometer process, so we're doing everything we can uh, within a, a budget to, to keep the heat down. Um, eight channel, 32 chip enables, but unlike a lot of our other products, E26 is actually built as an enterprise product, and it's trickling down into consumer. And that's actually that's a different strategy for Fizen with this product. So E26 essentially is going to be overbuilt uh, on the consumer market side. Uh, if you remember uh, some of our competitors uh, way back in the day, uh, Sandforce did that and it worked wow. out really good for them. Oh, and, bringing up old uh, school. That is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what? Some of that actually may come from, uh, from that because some of the remains of Sandforce are now technically uh, part of Fison, So, But... Uh, because it also has the the enterprise component to it, uh, capacity is going to ramp up to 32 terabytes. Now, I don't know what <laughs> consumer product is going to have 32 terabytes, but the option is going to be there. And it'll have the, the support for the DRAM to actually run it. So it's not just a, a paper tiger. Um, E26 is going to ship in multiple form factors. 
Uh, of course, we showed the the add-in card. Um, Chris, cut to M. M.2. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. Add-in card M.2 um, for the Enterprise E1S and whatever they come up with from their smorgasbord of names that uh, they kind of threw out there over the last five years at us. But uh, having all that extra development it's going to benefit the client side as well, the consumer market, because there's so many resources going into E26. And like I said, it's it's overbuilt from the start for this market. So I think everyone's really going to uh, dive in and and love this drive. So the, the two cards that you see, so you held up the M.2 M. and the PCIe add-in card. Um, just in case those watching don't understand the differences of what you were holding there. How do those two particular cards you were holding differ? I assume that the PCI Express card is the enterprise targeted with much higher capacity? Well, that kind of remains to be seen because the Alder Lake boards that are shipping right now, there's only like two or three with uh, PCIe Gen 5 uh, M.2 slots. So that opens the door for us to, to make a, an add-in card again. Of course, we all had add-in cards like 10 years ago or so when Intel brought those to market. Um, it's a it's a really great form factor, especially since you can't use SLI or Crossfire anymore for <laughs> any practical purposes. So we've got those those PCIe lanes on there, and no one really wants to stick in, you know, a sound card. So uh, the lanes are there. Why not? Uh, yeah. With with the add-in card, there's also some benefits where you're not power restrained, you're not running seven or eight watts uh, in the M.2, which is where you're kind of limited there. With the add-on card, you've got 25 watts from the PCIe lane, but you've also got this massive area to put a heat sink. So, you know, the bigger heat sink you put on, uh, you get to a point where uh, there's enough airflow in the system and enough uh, ability of the heat sink to pull that heat away from the controller so you can run these extreme workloads and not ever throttle the SSD. Got it. Nice. nice. So, so you know what? You, 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 this is just something that interesting because it's there is a an SSD group on Facebook where a lot of reviewers post their stuff. And there's sometimes chatter about how you don't want to cool the NAND on an SSD too much, how that could adversely affect the NAND. It's not like a CPU where you, you, you want to bring it down to the lowest temps all the time. Can you talk about that at all? Is that something you're familiar with? Well, I've never actually read the study that, <laughs> that's quoted, and it's our friend uh, Alva Malventano that, that really started reading that <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't want to name drop. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, from, he's, from Intel now. Yeah. Yeah, he's now at uh, Intel, and and he's of course in the group. And uh, Intel, until recently, was a, a NAND flash manufacturer, and uh, so he's he's going to have a lot more insight to you and me on the the particulars of the NAND. But it is my understanding that you don't want to super cool the the NAND. But let's be honest, there's a there's a range that that the companies put out, and it's you know usually like negative yeah. ten. C to, to 50, 70 C. And as long as you're in that range, you're good. And that's a very broad range for for this market. I mean, yeah, if you're in Ar in Antarctica or something, or <laughs> you know, flying around on the on Mars, which we actually do have an SSD on Mars, Fison does. Um do you really? Yeah, we're we're in the rover. The but rover. uh stuff stuff like that then you know that becomes a, a bigger deal but for for down here on planet earth and <laughs> uh in the united states in the midwest it's not something we have to think a lot about you want to talk about an expensive ssd uh, a space <laughs> a space rated ssd <laughs> would be a few pesos that's what i'm guessing <laughs> Yeah, yeah hard, I, hardened and uh, protected from radiation. Yeah, rat, rat yeah, hard. I, mean, I, and, I wish yeah. I was on that project just so I could have it on my my LinkedIn profile. That's pretty cool. That, that would be <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. 
<laughs> and and, that, and interesting aside, actually, on the on the process side, you you kept you you mentioned TSMC twelve nanometer a couple of times, the E twenty one T and the E twenty six. Folks are probably thinking, man, that sounds like pretty old school, you know, because we're down in the you know sub five, talking sub five these days nanometer for some of the big you know the GPU guys and the CPU guys and that all that good stuff, but you don't really need it um, for the the small controller level technologies that you you folks are building you need workhorse cost optimized processes right yes i mean it we could go out and build a, a seven nanometer product today but yeah. who's going to pay three times uh, for the final product actually to get it and with such a small benefit um I, it just doesn't make call sense for for everyone but Obviously, it's something we we look at, and uh, there'll be times when, when or there will be a time when seven nanometer or five nanometer uh, become cost efficient, uh, but it, we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah, got to have a big honking chip to justify that. <laughs> yeah, plus, I mean, if you look at the size of the of the controllers. Um, they're very small compared to a CPU or a, a GPU. I mean, GPUs these days, I mean, those things are yeah. massive. In the place, <laughs> so, man. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're the 6500 XT, and then you get a T, tiny little yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't oh, seen boy. that. Well to check that out. Yeah, yeah that it's, was it's a little, little, little small GPU that launched today. We'll, we'll I should mention. I should mention that. Um, the I should mention that I have a review of the the sixty four hundred Pro Radeon in the works as well. I'm going to try to get that up tomorrow. Oh, yeah. excellent! I can't wait to read that. By the way, so it's actually pretty go. cool. It's a, it's a little more. Um, it's a. Yeah, I'm not going to give it away. It's it's a it's a little more promising than the consumer uh, 6500 XT, though you still have to contend with you know no video encoding, which is. You know, not great in a in a, a ProVis card, but we'll get to that in the review. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. What else for uh, what else for Chris here? Did we miss any um, miss any questions in the chat? So, um, Chris, can you talk about the card that MSI showed off at CES? Was there anything oh, there special about that implementation? I know that was like a, a really a high end product that they were showing. <clears throat> Uh, well, I think everyone is, is really excited to get their, their Gen 5 capabilities and messages out there. Um, that That's handled through our, our company headquarters, uh, MSI is. So I was almost just as surprised as everyone else when <laughs> that tweet went up and they showed it off. Um, gotcha. Probably shouldn't say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it happens. I, I didn't know it. another reviewer sent it to me. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> wow, nice. But uh, I, everyone's in the same spot right now. Um, we we can go ahead and we can talk about availability and that sort of thing at Gen Five. I don't want to leave anyone out there uh, with questions unanswered. Uh, you will be able to see Gen Five SSDs being tested. Uh, Marco is definitely going to test. Uh, a Gen 5 SSD, hopefully in a couple of form factors, probably around Computex. And uh, then from there, you know, we'll have uh, our partners take over and they'll get to, to do their validations and pick their NAND and uh, firmware customizations and that sort of thing. And uh, people will be able to buy it. So Nice. So... So June timeframe, that's when Computex is. So late, late Q2 is what, what we're saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to take uh, the partners too long after June. They're going to be ready to to go. I mean, you can imagine right now what it's like uh, when the partners have your phone number and their engineers are calling and say, "Hey, what can, what info can you leak <laughs> me? What can you tell me?" So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. So, so E E twenty one mostly is first, and then a little later in the year E twenty six. Yeah, definitely. So you you uh, and some of the reviewers are going to have E21T. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm really trying for like February, early February. And I think uh, all the stars are lining up to make that a, a very strong uh, prediction. And then uh, Computex, we'll be able to talk more about when you're going to be able to buy uh, E26. Gotcha. Nice. Very cool. 
Nice. What else, Marco? What else we got here? I'm trying to see if there's anything. I, I, I mean, else in the I'm, chat. I'm thinking, I'm, Chris, did we did we miss anything that you want to make sure everybody knows about Faison? Because I, I think that there's nothing in the chat that we've uh, that we've I'm missed. Looking. Yeah. Come on, guys. I know you got a question. <laughs> this doesn't <laughs> this doesn't happen very often with Faison. We're usually actually pretty quiet. You, you know what? Do you want to, You should probably talk a bit about the Redriver tech. Um, that you guys have come in and why that's going to get you on so many motherboards. You want to cover that for a bit? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that's I've something. I've got another that, one here too. Uh, it's it's the, the redriver side. It's not as um, sexy as the, the controller and the fast pace stuff. But when it comes to the financials and uh, kind of like the company's ability to, to brag, this is, it's really a big deal. Uh, it's going to put, a Fizen chip on most motherboards that are going to ship in, in Q2 um, worldwide, obviously. With, I guess, let me back up and go to the significance of this chip. If you want to have PCI Express 5.0 at the bottom of your motherboard, at those bottom lanes, you're going to have to have a redriver in the middle. Now, what this technology actually does is it takes the signal and it sits somewhere in the middle between the CPU and, and those bottom lanes. It takes that signal, reads it, and then pushes it forward, uh, kind of like starting over. Imagine, I got it. Imagine this, you're, you're hitting a golf ball from the tees. There's someone <laughs> in the middle, right? And when it yep. lands, he smacks it again, and it gets to the hole, right? Without, the, without that guy in the middle, without that redriver, it's not going to, it's not going to get it to his destination. Just the, the data eye is going to shrink so much because the, the, the data is moving so fast uh, that that redriver has to be there. And of course, you know, when you can say, Hey, we've got this chip and we're on almost every motherboard that's going to ship or hopefully, you know, I'm not in sales, but uh, it's looking like a strong, uh, a strong argument there that, uh, this chip is going to be on a, a lot of places. And of course that opens the door for more revenue for Fizen. And, uh, with our history, more revenue for Fizen means more engineers, more products, uh, and scaling up and out. Very so cool. the redriver is kind of like the fairway wood of PCI express five chips. <laughs> That's it. That That's about it. right. That's in, it. in golf lingo anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. In the, I had to come up with that one on the fly. So. <laughs> that was pretty good. We'll, you know, I, I was hoping you would have went the geek route, used like the network switch, uh, you know, similarly there, where if you have a really long Ethernet cable, you need that switch in the middle to boost the signal to get that that other long stretch. But you went the sports yeah. route. That works, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, there's a couple interesting uh, questions here. James got one. Anything special needed for enabling RAID arrays with PCI Express SSDs? Uh, well, there's a there's a couple companies out there that are that are building uh, chips to to make RAID. Uh, you go back to the usual players, of course. LSI is gone now, unfortunately. I think they're part of Broadcom, but Broadcom yes. has some PCIe RAID uh, products. Of course, uh, Arika. I've always loved working with those guys as a reviewer because they put out such fast hardware. Uh, when you're ready to set a world record, that's that's who you talk to and and see what they've got coming down the pike. But um, a majority of the market that we've seen is really going to to software raid, and both AMD and Intel have figured out a way to make their main CPU also act as a raid controller uh, with optimizations there. Um, uh, Really, when it comes down to it, software RAID is the is the future, uh, and it's been that way for a long time. It didn't just kick off. So, mm. but, I mean, it, it's it's really been software RAID <clears throat> forever, unless you had one of those high end Arika controllers, like the high point controllers the back side. in the day. Yeah. That was all software RAID. It was just you know a middleman. It wasn't really doing yeah. anything in the hardware. Yeah. Well, a lot of them they had to they had to come up with a bridge chip in there. So uh, it's actually funny that, that you mentioned RAID because, you know, I was one of those guys that spent a lot of time doing uh, world records and that sort of thing. Uh, I think when we see these next generation platforms, and of course there's the carrier cards that fit four 
uh, NVMe SSDs on there back to a single 16 mm -hmm. lane uh, slot. Once you get into Gen 5, I mean, you're talking a lot of speed at that point. <laughs> so if, if you could say 14 gigabytes per second, one drive, uh, maybe a two gigabyte per second drop off as you add drives. I mean, within no time, you're you're seriously looking at a good, you know, gosh. Yeah, yeah, that's that like that many. I mean, uh, the, the SSDs, it's, it's a lot of megabytes per second. With, with <sighs> what's going on with the market, like there's so many folks that just are just you know disenfranchised with GPUs now, hardly are to buy. SSDs are still like this hot, exciting thing for enthusiasts. So that kind of stuff, man. But I, lo I love hearing about it. Good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want I, some. You know, somebody right away when E twenty six comes out, they're gonna they're gonna raid a couple of them together and go twenty eight gigs a second. You know, they're gonna do that. John Coulter's <laughs> yeah. already done it, knowing him. <laughs> <laughs> oh believe me he is asking me every day hey what can I, I get some drives i believe it there you go I, there's another question here i don't know if this one this is a little i'm not sure why you'd want to do that um pci bridge they're talking about bridging from gen 3 and gen 4 to a gen 5 i i, I actually do know what uh what he's yeah. talking about um at at a one of the, one of the big time uh, SSD reviewers back when E16 was coming out, uh, someone it it actually wasn't from Fizen. We just did bought it, and I, I think it was a ridiculous price. But you could take uh, two PCIe Gen three uh, slots and kind of make a PCIe Gen four slot in a roundabout way. To, it's more of an engineering thing um, to test with, but yeah. I haven't seen one of those uh, for going to PCIe Gen Five. Um, yeah, no, that 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 makes sense. It, it seems if, like if it, they it, did have said, one, I couldn't afford it to to test with on consumer products. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to pop that question up too. We have it's a like, question from John Coulter, Chris. Do you want to answer? That? Uh, it's like automatic, <laughs> automatic. Yeah. Um, I, for, I, for the third time today, John. <laughs> around <laughs> copy text. <laughs> around you. Um, <laughs> did did the did the chia um mining you know situation and and the you know the concern from folks uh oh now we're going to have an ssd shortage did that influence your uh you know design and the controllers are you are you engineering for you know mining workloads and being able to withstand those well, I mean, we're not putting all our eggs in one basket with Chi, and thank goodness, uh, as far as I know, no one really did. We did uh, use some of our. It, you'll understand this, Dave, from from guitars. There's the the Fender Custom Shop. Uh, yeah, maybe. I like to I like to call this this little area we've got going on not really so little, but uh, the Fizen Custom Shop. Okay. And we did put out a, a Chia driver, a couple Chia drives, and they're. Their benefit was more um, endurance. So it's not just a Chia product because once we put that out, a lot of companies came up and said, hey, you know what? We really need a super high endurance drive. Um, make this for us or uh, get this going. Um, as far as hurting the, the SSD sales, I think we've had 25 other things uh, supply chain wise and with COVID uh yeah. that hit us worse um so it chia was just a, a blip on the radar everyone had high hopes uh i didn't want to see a, an ssd shortage but i did want to see chia take off because i got a whole bunch of hard drives over there <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to see Chia yeah, you could have made die. some coin <laughs> I wanted to see Chia die a really early death after an entire lifetime of Chia pet jokes with my life there you go so yeah, I knew that I'm, I'm glad it went away <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well we should we should probably uh think about wrapping here but we we do have a couple things uh if you'll humor us a little bit Chris that we should mention before we do um yeah, that's fine. yeah so tonight so there you go. Well, we appreciate you joining us. This is fascinating stuff. 
Um, if you if you haven't gotten in, I'm dropping a link into the chat. You get in it to win it. The hot hardware, hot hardware and Lenovo CES 2022 New Year New Gear giveaway is going on right now, where you could win one of these uh, beautiful Lenovo laptops. You've got ThinkPad X1 Carbon. You've got a Yoga Nine and an IdeaPad Duet. Three prizes up for grabs. Uh, three days left. Three days left to win to get in it to win it. Um, with uh, the good folks at Lenovo, I'm, I'm sure there's probably some Fizon drives kicking around on one of those machines. Chris, <laughs> you have any, well, you, have, if, you know, any design wins at, at uh, like in ThinkPads or whatever? Well, I tell you what, um, if we got a couple minutes extra, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it, of course. I ordered my, my custom Lenovo. I do this maybe every five or six years or so. I get it built how I want and every spec, of course, on the SSD side, I get the smallest, cheapest SSD so I can <laughs> shove my own in there. But uh, so I picked out the uh, P15 Gen 2 uh, Intel. It's got a single PCIe Gen 4 uh, M.2 mm. lane, but it's also got dual Gen 3 2280 lanes. So I can shove three uh, high capacity SSDs in there. And it's wow. it's so fast, too. It's so fast. I'm, <laughs> nice. I'm starting to, to get used to it. The keyboard is not the same as my W530 that's outgoing, but uh, I'll, I'll get used to it. But I tell you what, the, the performance increase from going from a SATA SSD to a modern E18 with that with that really fast flash in there, I mean, it's... Yeah. It's a it's a big deal. It's not just a new notebook. It's like a supercharged new notebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Yeah, no, it's always always good to uh, to upgrade the storage. Again, we've we've said it before. It'll uh, it'll make the most difference uh, in terms of responsiveness and feel. And uh, highly recommend if you haven't, uh, not just for Chris's benefit to to buy more <laughs> SSDs, but if you haven't considered upgrading your storage. And SSD is the way to do it. So there you go. There's the uh, hot hardware and, and Lenovo New Year New Gear giveaway it's still going on right now. That's the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. By the way, that's my daily driver. That's a great machine, and I'm, we're giving uh, one of those away. Yep. I'm going to uh, sign up for that because I've got the first <laughs> Gen X1 Carbon, and it is a great notebook. And it's what Gen Nine now or something? You said. Yeah, it's Gen Nine. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you so, go. You you could be eligible. You're not. You, the The only <laughs> disqualifiers would be uh, if you're with <laughs> Lenovo or Hot Hardware. So yeah, you're good. Um, I can get in. <laughs> I encourage everyone else to get into because those notebooks are 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 really quick i love the designs good. of those so. yeah good machines and uh yeah and then uh, the other thing is if you haven't checked it out yet on the web uh, we've got a couple of reviews we've got the uh, samsung galaxy s21 fe the fan edition review i'm dropping a link in the chat and marco just launched his review of the uh, amd radeon rx 6500 xt uh, that's an interesting uh, gpu which uh, we will just let you uh, dive in and read on your own uh, but you can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware. There's my, there's my grubby geek mitts holding the uh, Galaxy S21 <laughs> FE. Um, and uh, youtube.com slash hothardware vids. Hit thumbs up and subscribe uh, so you can be notified when we go live and we go streaming. Hot Hardware Twitch, you can find us there as well. In about an hour, stay tuned for Val Rojas, who will be gaming on Hot Hardware Twitch. She will, uh, I think, she's been doing a little bit of rust lately, if you're into that. She's a, she is a, uh, a hoot, uh, a lot of fun uh, watching her get, uh, game out with her friends, live streaming on Hot Hardware Twitch. Chris Ramsayer from Fizon Electronics, putting us in the know about PCI Express Gen 5. How cool is that? You need to make it happen sooner <laughs> than later, though, dude. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, keep, Thanks keep, for having me, and uh, it's a great podcast. It. I enjoy watching it uh, whenever it's on yeah. uh, every week. Uh, so, pre Thanks for having taking me. Your, yeah, no, appreciate you taking your time. It's great stuff. Uh, we, we appreciate the uh, 
the blinding speed for storage. Marco, any parting words of wisdom for folks? No, I think you guys covered it. Um, stop by the site on Tuesday next week. You guys, I almost, I'm so tired. I almost spilled the beans on a notebook that I'm touching right here, but I can't say what it is. But you'll want to be <laughs> at Hot Hardware on Tuesday to see what this is. And mm -hmm. yeah, we uh, as soon as Chris gets those drives to me, I'm going to make sure he ships to me before he ships to John. We'll get those reviews up. ASAP. There you go. <laughs> yeah, th thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> Chris Ramsayer from Faison. It's great to great to talk with you again, bud. Take care and <laughs> there you go. Uh we, we you, you know you're a man in demand, and that's a good thing, buddy. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh at any rate, thanks, thanks so much for joining us, Chris. And uh keep keep up the good work at Faison and uh everybody else, thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>